file name class seven underscore rip underscore free dot video five four three two one. All of our previous analysis has assumed that we are choosing amongst the set of assets that are risky in the sense that each asset has got variance. The portfolio problem changes a little bit when we introduce a so-called risk-free rate. Now, if our portfolio horizon is, let's say, one quarter, there's one asset that we could choose that has exactly zero variance, and that's the 90-day Treasury bill. For example, we could purchase the 90-day Treasury bill at $98. In three months from now, we know that the value will be 100. Sure. Therefore, our return, which is a little over 8% on an annual basis, is guaranteed. So the expected return for the Treasury bill is exactly what we know in advance. And it turns out that the variance is exactly zero. So in this example, suppose that um, the expected return is 8.4%, the realized return will also be 8.4%. So consider the definition of variance. The variance is the expectation of the realized value minus the expected value squared. Well, the realized value and the expected value are identical. So you tra subtract the two, you get zero. So the variance is exactly zero. If the variance is zero, then by definition, the covariance of this particular asset and any other asset is exactly equal to zero. Consider the definition of covariance. You take an asset's, let's say a stock's uh, uh, return, subtract out the expectation of the return, multiply by the risk-free uh, return, which is in our example 8.4%, subtract out the expected risk-free return, which is 8.4%, multiplying something that's not zero by something that is exactly zero, hence the covariance is exactly zero. So anything that's known in advance has a variance of zero and a covariance equal to zero. So this uh, dramatically uh, simplifies the portfolio choice problem um, in that we have a, a zero covariance situation with all other assets. So what happens? And this is the way that we usually proceed. The usual mean variance framework delivers the parabola that we've seen uh, many times and that you can explore in the Java-based application on uh, portfolio mechanics. Now, when we add a risk-free asset to the analysis, the frontier changes. And let me walk you through that. In terms of the variance frontier, when we add a risk-free asset, 100% weight in the risk-free asset is just a point, it's a point on the expected return variance frontier, it's a point on the graph where variance equals exactly zero. And all combinations of the risk-free and any other portfolio on the minimum variance frontier can be characterized by a straight line joining the two. So what we do is draw a line from the, the zero variance point where the risk-free rate is to various points on the frontier. And we keep on doing that until we get the best possible combination of risk-free and risky assets. So you can think of drawing a line from the minimum, uh, the global minimum variance point across to the um, point where the risk-free originates, and then continuing up the positively sloping frontier until we get the highest possible trade-off between expected return and standard deviation. Now, if you think about doing this, um, we can increase. The, uh, the slope of that line to a certain point that will be maximized, and that point will be the so-called tangency portfolio on the minimum variance frontier. 
And the highest possible slope, what does that mean? Well, slope, if you recollect, is defined as the rise divided by the run. The rise, in this case, is the difference between the return that we're getting on our portfolio of risky assets and the risk-free rate. And the run is just the, the variance of that portfolio, or the standard deviation. So getting the highest possible slope in our combinations of risk-free and risky assets is the same thing as getting the best possible deal. That we want the maximum possible return over and above the risk-free divided by the variance. This gives us the best trade-off of expected return and risk. So when we do this, when we find this tangency point, it gives us the maximum possible reward per unit of risk. And that's exactly what we want. Now the interesting thing here is that when we do this analysis, one portfolio amongst all of the thousands of the portfolios on the minimum variance frontier is optimal. One portfolio of risky assets delivers the best possible combination of expected return and variance. And as we move to the right or move to the left, all of the points on the old minimum variance frontier or the old efficient frontier are dominated by portfolios on this line going from 100% risk-free to 100% invested in this one particular risky portfolio. See, the analysis changes here. Before, when we did not have the risk-free rate, we could choose portfolios anywhere from the global minimum variance portfolio all the way up to a portfolio that has uh, very high risk or standard deviation. When we introduce the risk-free asset, that analysis isolates one particular portfolio, one particular portfolio on the efficient frontier that has the best possible combination of expected return and risk. All other portfolios on the minimum variance frontier are what we call dominated. They're dominated by a strategy of investing in the risk-free asset and this one particular so-called tangency portfolio. So combinations of the risk-free and this tangency portfolio deliver more in terms of expected return divided by variance than a portfolio on the old minimum variance efficient frontier. We do better. And you can see that we do better even by the indifferent curve analysis. That the indifference curves we prefer more expected return and less variance. And this introduction of the risk-free rate allows us to obtain a better portfolio in terms of that rule. That for the same variance, you've got a choice. You can choose a portfolio on the old efficient frontier, or you can choose the tangency portfolio, mix it with the treasury bill to obtain the exact same variance, but a much higher expected return. So in that sense, portfolios that were on the old efficient frontier are dominated by portfolios that lever up and down this one single tangency portfolio. So you can see that the analysis, while remaining similar in that we always want to choose efficient portfolios, has changed the efficient frontier. I keep on referring to the old efficient frontier. Well, the old efficient frontier is simply the old minimum variance or minimum standard deviation parabola. When we introduce the risk-free, the efficient frontier really just turns into a line. And the line originates at the risk-free rate at zero variance, goes out to the frontier, hits a tangency point on the old efficient frontier, and then continues on. So there's only one point on the old efficient frontier that's on the new efficient frontier. 
and the old efficient frontier was a parabola, the new efficient frontier is a straight line. The single point is the tangency portfolio. Now any portfolios from the tangency portfolio towards the risk-free rate uh, on the y-axis are portfolios where we take the tangency portfolio and mix that with some investment in the risk-free asset. Maybe it's 50-50, maybe it's 90-10, but all of those portfolios have some risk-free asset um, in the portfolio. When we get to the tangency point, that simply means that 100% of our investment is in the risk-free rate, or I'm sorry, within the market uh, tangency portfolio. When we go beyond the uh, tangency point, that means that we are actually borrowing and investing in this one tangency portfolio. So we're levering up, whereas on the other side, we're levering down. So the key thing to realize is that the portfolio changes shape. It changes shape in terms of uh, now being a straight line. Now how does this affect our optimal portfolio choice? Well, the same analysis obtains. You can think of investors with very steep indifference curves, and these investors are the ones with very low tolerance for risk or high risk aversion, and these investors would be choosing a portfolio that has a fairly low standard deviation. Those portfolios are portfolios that are mainly invested in the risk-free asset, like the Treasury bill, and maybe to a smaller uh, weight, um, this one tangency portfolio. Investors that have a higher tolerance for risk or risk aversion will be out on the other side, uh, past the tangency point. Those investors will probably be borrowing and investing in the tangency portfolio. So all of the analysis uh, basically remains the same. Tell me what the risk aversion is, and I've already computed the set of efficient portfolios, then I can tell you what the weights should be in terms of our investment in um, the best possible uh, portfolio.